Hello from Chickenwood Studio Podcast. This is Lori coming to you on the first day of spring, March 21st, I think, 2016, from Chickenwood Manor, where I live, and the studio where I knit, <clears throat> excuse me, sew and weave and spin and create and make soap and do an awful lot of things a little tiny bit at a time. So I don't feel like I get a lot accomplished, but it's all good. Today, I, I had an open window here of some time alone in the house, so I thought I should make another attempt to get a podcast out. I, this is about my fourth try in the last two weeks, and I've had issues, technical issues with recording and other things, and so I'm just going for it, and I'm hoping for the best here. So I'm going to start right out with my one FO today to tell you about. Uh, it is my wet vet shawl by Kari Westerman in my hand spun that I got from that was bats from Starcroft Fiber. It's a my wonderful most favorite shawl now. It's it's such a lovely project. See the design is really subtle but but strong in these diagonal lines across and the shading of the colors and. It's so soft and it has some angora in it, so I don't know if you can see the halo, <clears throat> but it's got a lovely halo, just enough to fuzz it up a bit. And uh, I'll probably be able to use it a little bit this spring and then look forward to using it in the fall and next winter. And it just feels so good to have it done. It seemed like it took forever. So I highly recommend the pattern. You just have to stick with it when it gets to the point where the rows are getting longer and longer and longer. It seems like it'll take forever. You just have to commit to it, which is kind of what I had to do. So I'm super happy about that. <clears throat> I have another FO, but it's gone to my daughter by now. And um, okay. uh, I don't know where it is at the moment. It was here for the other attempts. Take one, two, and three. <laughs> uh, so maybe at a future one, I'll have the green hat. It was the snow slide with the monster green yarn from Ellen, uh, Doc Mason's yarn, which was delightful to knit and came out really well. So I look forward to sharing that with you next time. It's got to have a lot of whips going on this time. I should probably say on Ravelry, on Piper Mom, on Instagram, LMF Dubois. And, and we have a Ravelry group over there with some discussions going and, and some uh, questions and contributions. And if you're here for the first time, welcome. If you're back after seeing it before, thanks for coming back. And I hope you enjoyed it and will stick around and uh, subscribe and visit with us again in the future. So today I will start with a sip of tea. I think it's, you know, the podcasty thing to do, right? It's a little hot. I don't know. Super hot, but good. Lemon ginger. And this is in my Chickenwood mug, which is a new uh, acquisition from a recent trip. Isn't that the cutest sitting on her eggs there? I'll tell you more about where I got this later when I talk about a recent adventure. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go back to whips that probably uh, maybe you remember from last time. I've made some progress on some things. I'm sorry for the noise here. I had to take it out of a zip bag and put it in a plastic bag for a weekend trip. I'm almost finished with my lighthouse socks, which are made in opal um, Van Gogh in the Starry Night colorway. They are so close to being done. I'm on the Twisted Rib Knit, uh, Twisted Knit 1 Pearl 1. A ribbing at the top. I probably have about a half inch to go and I'll cast them off. I did the sweet tomato heel in it so it's kind of funny looking but I think it's gonna fit really well. I think it, I'm gonna like how it fits. I mean I have tried them on I think. <laughs> I have because I knew I needed to go an extra wedge of the sweet tomato heel process. So those I'm super excited about because that means I'm just about done. And even though I didn't completely finish, I started some new things recently. Um, but still, I'm forcing myself to get those off the needles. The other project I've gotten a lot done on, and I'm much closer to being done, 
is Duchess of Devonshire. And this beauty, oh, designed by Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears podcast. And I've seen it in a few different renditions on Instagram recently. It's so pretty. And this is an alpaca wool blend sport weight yarn on, I think, size 5 needles, maybe US 5. So I am so excited. Can't wait for this to be done. Although, you know, it's spring coming. It's probably not going to be used a lot until next year. But so psyched. Isn't that pretty? Hang it down in front, wrap it around, all kinds of ways to use this. So I have about, well, let's see, this much to go. That's a lot of stitches, a lot of rows. But I'm so used to the lacy edge pattern now that it goes much more quickly than it did at first. So that's just about done. Super excited about that. And what else have I shown you? That's a new one. <laughs> oh, the white socks, maybe? No, that's not it. Oh, I'm missing one. Where did I put it? Ah, I didn't bring everything over. Hmm. Oh, here it is, just in a different bag. I had told you that I was going to do these, do socks out of the white yarn from Carrie's Farm in Michigan, um, Serenity Farm. She does a, a Corydale alpaca blend. And I showed you the yarn a few months back. Finally got the socks started. And this is, it's, it's sport weight, so they're a little heavier. So on fewer stitches than a regular sock pattern. And I'm using an adaptation of a sock pattern from the book In the Footsteps of Sheep by Debbie mm, Zulinski. I had the book for the last attempt to podcast, but since then I've loaned it to a friend. So I don't have it. Debbie Zulinski, I'm pretty sure. She wrote a book about her travels. She walked from Shetland down through into, well, obviously she took a boat or a plane to the Scottish mainland and visited several islands up in the, in the Shetlands and in the Western Isles, I think, and uh, the native sheep there and a lot of people. And she camped her way and walked and gathered wool from fences and fields and things like that and spun it on a drop spindle and then knitted socks. <laughs> so this is one of her designs, sort of. I had to use fewer stitches, but this this middle section is her, uh, I forgot which sock it was called. If I can remember that. Oh, I think I do have the copy. The Collins Castle Milk Moorit socks from the book. Here's a photo of Debbie's sock from the book not a great photograph because it's black and white, but it gives you this a sense of the sock with the ribbing up the sides and the, the lacy cable down along the ankle and up. It's fun to learn a new, a new uh, cable lace pattern. I've never done a cable with lace in the middle. So uh, it's been great to learn something new. Yes, so let's see. I think... I'll give you a Gansey update. I've been practicing on the Gansey uh, sweater with the knitting belt and the long pins. And I made a goal for myself to do about 20 minutes to a half an hour every day. And a lot of days I have been able to do that. It's been really great. I'm getting more relaxed with the, the big needles and the belt thing on my side. And I'm making some progress. I think when I started, when I picked it up again, Recently, I started about down here. Then I moved to my progress keeper. And so slowly but surely, I've made, I've made quite a bit of progress. So uh, super fun. Uh, just getting used to being all rigged up with the belt and stuff. I, I had put that off a lot before because it felt like kind of a pain. I guess the Shetlanders that's, and others who use the belt regularly, it just becomes, you know, normal. But it's a bit of a stretch for me, as I, I find that I tend to just sit down a little bit, knit a little bit, get distracted, get up, go do something else. So a lot of my knitting time is, is just a very short bit. So this has been 
kind of neat to have a designated time where I look at the clock and I sit there and I let the phone ring or I let the other things that come into my head that I have to do, I can write them down and put them on a list and deal with it later. So I've treated that and I also was making a, a chart for the Duchess shawl to get that finished. Just to make a concerted effort to move these along and get them done and allow myself to have dedicated knitting time instead of just in the extra times. Uh, so that's been really helpful. So I'm going to remember that. Uh, another whip that I recently picked up that I wanted to share with you because I had mentioned this book earlier. Uh, this is the book that the Tea Cozy pattern came out of. Knit Real Shetland from Jameson and Smith. Lovely, lovely patterns in here. And one that I started when I returned from Shetland two years ago was this, well, a year and a half ago. This is vest designed by Hazel Tyndall. And I've, it uses six of the natural colors of the, what do they call that? Shetland Supreme, I think. The jumper weight natural colors, not dyed. And uh, I'm not using the pins and the belts on this one. I am, I switched over to the, the circular needles. And it's been a while. This is going to be another designated knitting time project. I'd love to have this done by September when I go back to Shetland. That would be, just feel so great to wear this up there. <laughs> we shall see. Get the other little things off the, off the uh, needle so that I can focus on it. But it's just a super traditional Fair Isle motifs with the colors, all the beautiful natural colors. I just love them. And here's the bag that it's in that I brought home from Shetland Wool Week, 24. It's got the teapot with the cozy, and a lovely little cup of tea, and the knitting belt, and the Fair Isle knitting. It's a treasure. <laughs> so what else have I been working on? I think I have uh, new things to tell you about. They're no longer on the horizon. They're actually on the needles. And uh, before I go into those, I think I'll talk about a couple of acquisitions and my trip to Maine uh, from a couple weekends ago when I went up to spa in Freeport with my friend Amy. We just went for the weekend and had a great time. Uh, spa Knit and Spin is a totally casual, unofficial gathering of knitters and spinners and crafters from all over New England and beyond sometimes. And uh, we just all arrive on Freeport one weekend in the winter and relax and knit and spin and casually teach new things or, or learn new skills and generally just catch up with old friends and make new friends. And uh, it's a great winter getaway to look forward to and then to enjoy. And they have a lovely market there, marketplace. And at the marketplace, <clears throat> let's see, where is it? Here it is. I saw that Highland Handmaids was there, and I had heard about them through oh, probably some other podcast, and I was looking forward to, to seeing them there, and I met Heather. I had seen her podcast before, and uh, this was what I ended up getting from her. I could not resist this one. I mean, it was it's even prettier in the skein. I mean, I don't know. It's so pretty now. <laughs> it's just so colorful. There's a lot more orange coming in real life than on the screen. The screen is picking up more paint than oranges, but it's called, <laughs> did I save the tag? I'm sure I did, but it's not in here. It's called Underpass Artwork. And here's the sock I've begun. It's uh, Hermione's Everyday Sock. I'm now on the heel flap in the back, but I just love how that came out. Super duper. So yay, Heather, a little color therapy at the end of winter. Yeah, needed that for sure. And the only other thing I bought at Spa was this mug from Maple Lane Pottery, which is my just favorite. Uh, I actually, my daughter and I suggested we both go to a <laughs> Mug Buyers Anonymous group. My name is Lori. It's been two weeks since I last bought a mug. Hmm. And already looking for others. We just shift them around in our house. We have a waiting cupboard and in use cupboard and every season I switch a few out and switch a few in. <laughs> it's crazy. Pardon me while I scratch my nose. 
And what else? There were some things at SPA that came up that were free of charge uh, from the free tables. And one was some really cool uh, strips of fabric to be used for rug weaving. So Amy and I got those squirreled away because we look forward to making some rag rugs without having to make rags. It's fantastic. So in another um, it segment or another podcast, when I get the rug loom threaded, and I'm getting there, I will uh, bring you down and maybe show you some of the rug weaving, which should be fun. Did I get any other things up there? I can't remember that I did. But another recent acquisition is this yarn that I've already caked up. This is from Skeins in the Stacks from Alaska. She was advertising for a sale in, uh, on Instagram and it caught my eye because I've been looking for a yellow. I've never bought yellow yarn. I've never used it on projects, so therefore I never had any scraps. And I felt like my scrap blankets really needed some yellow in them. And here's what I've got so far with my lighted squares one. And I'm just popping a yellow in here and I'll pop them all around the outside edges before I go any further. I, I mean, I like it without the yellow too, but I just think the yellow, I, I wanted to spark it up a little bit with some brightness. And I love this. I mean, I don't know. I might take that square off and make something out of this. Because I saw um, Truly Myrtle has designed a shawl, which I've actually started, but in a different color. Her rattan shawl she did in kind of a yellow like this. Uh, so we'll see. I, I don't think it's, you know, the best color for me, but it's uh, certainly fitting the bill for my scrappy sock blankies. Excited about that. And speaking of Truly Myrtle and Libby and... She's a designer in us, New Zealand, and a podcaster. She's switched over now to audio only. But uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've watched her first 10 podcasts, her video ones. Really enjoyed those. And this was her rattan shawl that caught my eye. And I had some green yarn for this, thinking that perhaps it would be a really nice springtime shawl, spring and summer. So it's this tonal piney green. And I've only just begun very, very, I mean, I've begun it several times, but right now it's just a mere tiny, tiny bit of a few stitches. I mean, that's hardly even worth showing. That is more like on the horizons than on the needles, but it is there and it's going to be an interesting pattern. And it's so nice. This was stash yarn that I've been waiting to use for years and uh, I'm so happy to have a reason to use it now. And let's see, I have a couple more things that I was working on this weekend. I took a trip to Boston to visit my son and to go to a concert with him to see the Boston Symphony Orchestra with Gil Shaham. My son is a violinist and loves Gil Shaham, as do I. We've gone to see him a couple times in our area and uh, it's sort of a, one of our little traditions that we hadn't done in a long time is to go out to a nice concert together. So I took the bus to Boston instead of driving. And you know what that means, right? Knitting time on the bus. Yeah, so I started a couple new things. Well, I think this is, yeah, and I picked up another old thing. <laughs> so this is the new thing. I, I spun this yarn years ago from a fleece that I think I got at either Rhinebeck or the Massachusetts Sheep and Wool. It was a gorgeous Romney fleece. I spun it really fine and made a traditional three ply from plying from three bobbins. And it's kind of a, I'd say it's a DK weight now. And I, it was a gorgeous gray, taupey gray, and I put it in an indigo dye pot, which it's not looking very blue. It's really more looking like a steel gray, which is fine with me. But if I want more blue, I can dye it after I knit the sweater. But I have been, I have had this idea in my head of a cardigan and a kind of a fluffy top or a, or a, a dress with like a top and a, a fluffier skirt. And so I need, I need a light cardigan. All my cardigans are pretty heavy and for like wearing with turtlenecks in the winter and in the cellar where it's cold or 
cardigan. They're for cold winter weather, but I really wanted a light cardigan for spring or fall or a cool summer. So I found this pattern on Ravelry called the Heathered Cardigan, Heathered, by Melissa Shashwery. Very simple, but it has a textured yoke for the fronts and the back. The sleeves are just stockinette, and then the whole bottom of it is all stockinette. And this is what I mostly knitted on the bus. And uh, yeah, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's it's just a really kind of a loosey gauge. It's still five stitches to the inch, I think on size five needles for me. And uh, I think I'm going to love it. I'm so psyched. I think it's going to go pretty quickly compared to the Gansey and the Fair Isle. And at this point, I have finished the textured section on the yoke. So now it's just smooth sailing and relaxing stockinette, except I still have the increases on the raglan at the shoulder to go for a ways. But after I separate out for this, the sleeves, you know, it'll just be sailing down along the body. And maybe by fall, we'll have it ready or late summer. That would be really great. And then the other thing that I picked up from the, the pile of what I haven't knit on in ages, because I have Shetland on the mind, <laughs> is this little bit of Shetland lace, which uh, I picked up Shetland lace weight at Jameson and Smith's, and it's two ply lace weight, and a pattern by a local knitter that they put out, Ina Irvine, who's who I met up there, and her daughter, Linda. And Anna had designed this pattern, the quarry scarf. This was at Jameson and Smith's. So this again, I, I've started several times, but I think I'm finally getting it. I finished the stitch, um, the repeat once now, and I'm going up for the second time. And it, it just looks like frothy bubbles at this point, but this is how it is. This is how it's doing. And actually, I'm enjoying knitting it now. I, I can get into kind of a little zone and relax with it. And it's so much more enjoyable to now that I, I feel like I know what I'm doing. I can follow the pattern pretty confidently and recognize where I'm at, read my knitting. Reading your knitting is so helpful, being able to read your knitting. And I, I'd say that's one of the first things that I would want students to learn once they've been knitting a little bit gives you so much confidence. You can solve your problems. You can fix mistakes. You can look back to find your place. It's really key. I think I've covered all the whips now. What's next? Oh, I was going to talk about spinning a little bit. I talked about spa. Talked about my lovely new things. Oh, here's another lovely new thing. On my way out the door, on the day I was traveling to Maine, I stopped and checked in the mailbox, and this had arrived. And this is my fiber from Barber Black Sheep in Wales, Catherine of Barber Black Sheep. And she was um, putting out, she has a lovely Etsy shop and a beautiful assortment of dyed fiber blends. And then this one is just 100% wool, Welsh wool. And there are one, I think, whoa, there are eight colors in this collection. And they all will just look beautiful together. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them. I have to have a plan in mind. Uh, it's 200 grams, so it's not a huge amount, but perhaps a shawl of some kind or Fair Isle type of thing, hat mittens. I don't know. But it's beautifully prepared, and I haven't even started spinning it yet because I don't know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> So that's on hold, uh, but it's it's exciting that it came. I just been watching her website and really wanting to spin some of her things. Uh, the other spinning news, I started spinning from one of my Jacob bumps from Massachusetts Sheep and Wool. This is from Marshmallow Farm in Fort Plain, New York, and it's so soft you could wear it on your neck. In fact, the lady who ran the booth, her, her the farm person, the farmer, she was wearing a cowl that day, and I think it was a three-ply, one of each of these colors, the white, the gray, and the brown, and this, this beautiful cowl, and I, I'd love to know her pattern. I sent her an email. I haven't heard back. I could just decide a pattern to do with it, 
with a three color marled yarn. So I have spun the gray and the brown of the first bump and then I have to do the rest of the white for the first bump and then the rest and I'll have you know two two sets to make a three ply out of if I decide to do that. I've never spun Jacob. It's quite nice to spin. I like it. And I'm also trying to finish up a batch of Shetland lamb in oatmeal from Contented Butterfly Farm. See the oatmeal colors that you can see as it's spun. As a roving, it's not so easy to see the colors. And I'm almost done with that. I have two full bobbins and another one to fill. And I think I'll make another three ply and do some kind of a chunky um, hat Aaron style with stitch cables and stuff like that, just to give it some, it'll be sort of a rustic, that's what I have in mind. Maybe I'll try and design one, <clears throat> a rustic cable type of hat. Or I'll just do another snow slide hat, like my green one. It's a great pattern. I really enjoyed it. Uh, so that's on the spinning horizon. <laughs> and I wanted to share with you something else that, uh, let's see, when did I, oh, this is another thing I got at Spa. I bought it from a friend. She had bought it and not even opened it. And I, dun -da -da, I've been interested in, in hearing Norm Kennedy for ages and learning from him. In fact, I looked into going to the Marshfield School of Weaving in Vermont and haven't made it there yet. And I uh, still would love to do that. But this DVD, I've only seen the one DVD. There are two. So far, I love it. And I, I just can't wait to watch it again and watch the rest of it and soak it up. He has so much knowledge and is such an interesting person. And I really enjoy hearing him teach, basically teach and tell stories about his life in Scotland and his fiber experience. And so if you ever see it and have a chance to give it a look, I re I'd recommend it. And that is, I think that's just about it. I feel like I'm forgetting things, but I don't know. I have talked about the whips, the FO, the acquisitions, the weaving, hmm, not so much, but but the spinning. Oh, and the sewing. Oh, here's a new bag I sewed. I did want to show you that. I wanted to make a drawstring, see what it was like to make a drawstring. I enjoyed it. I think I would make a little more of a ruffle on the top. Uh, I have made a second one since for my daughter, but she had that with a little, I put the, the band for the ribbon a little bit lower, but uh, this came out great. It's just the right size for a sock project. It's got my Agatha socks in here, which have been on hold for a long time. Designed by Claire of New Hampshire Knits. Look at that. I've, I've gotten halfway up the foot on one sock. And I think I'm finally getting used to the pattern too. So I think that'll make doing the second sock much easier and more fun. But I had to really pay close attention to this pattern for some reason. But it's I love it. It's a lovely, lovely look. And I love my little bag. I'm psyched about sewing. Today I just, I took apart a couple panels of curtains that I purchased at Maine Woolens up in Brunswick a couple years back. Uh, so they're, they're really long and they're, you know, maybe three, four feet wide. And I have little tiny windows to put curtains on in the shed up in Maine. And they are going to be just right. I just sort of um, picked out the, the hem and then cut the whole thing in half and redid the hem at the cut. And um, hang on a sec, I'm gonna show. So the cafe rods with the little brass rings, you know, chrome, whatever, they'll just pinch the tops of the curtain. <coughs> Pardon me. And they're gonna work out great. So it's so fun because I set those aside years ago thinking maybe I'd have that kind of a use for them kept track of them and actually using them. So many times when I do that, they get lost in the shuffle and they're a total waste. So it feels really gratifying to actually come around and do what I had originally planned. And sewing wise, I've been cleaning out the room, which used to be my son's bedroom. And um, I'm gonna actually sort of claim it for my own now. He's 25. <laughs> He's in China in grad school, and now that he has his life 
you know, his room is going to be a sewing room and maybe a guest room when he comes home. And it's really exciting. I, I've been watching other podcasts and seeing some other women's work rooms, sewing rooms and things. And I think after so long of, of just sort of everything being for and about the kids, I it never really occurred to me to actually say, you know, I think I will make this place my own or my own room for my own work or my office or my studio, even though I call this Chickenwood Studio. <clears throat> my studio has been all over the house, and every time we have company, I have to sweep it all away and make room. And uh, I used to think that was cool to have spinning rooms, at, spinning wheels everywhere and piles of fluff and knitting bags, but that kind of clutter just it's draining me now, so I'm psyched about having a room to, to put it all in, or some most of it. And so it's just something new, and that's that's inspiring. So today I really enjoy being up there doing those curtains, and listening to the wind blow outside, and just almost as if it was a new space, a completely new space. <clears throat> Has yet to be painted and decorated, and some shelves to be put up there. and some stuff to be moved out of his. But it's getting there, it's a process. So I hope that you are all doing well and inspired by the lovely spring sunshine, if you have it in your area. I saw there was some more snow in Maine, which was uh, after all this winter, now it's snowing at the end of March, first day of spring, <clears throat> but it probably won't last long. We are having a lot of sun and I noticed in Boston there's a lot of green already out there. So pretty driving along the Charles River. And I didn't even realize it until I, I moved, as I came westward on the bus looking all around me, everything went from a little bit of green to no green to all brown. And I realized, yeah, we're always a few weeks later than them. Uh, so whatever, <laughs> it's coming. So I wish you all well. <clears throat> I hope you'll stop over in uh, our Ravelry group and say hello. And I hope that uh, you'll subscribe or at least come back another time and visit and get in touch with me. Thanks for watching. And um, I guess I'll say so long for now. I don't have a tagline or anything. So have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.